The Madras High Court has suggested castration for rapists as a deterrent for curbing spiraling sex offences. Now, in a landmark order, the High Court has said, and I quote, traditional laws are not stringent enough to yield any desired positive result. Suggestion of castration looks barbaric, but barbaric crimes should definitely attract barbaric model of punishment, unquote. Let's go across to T.S. Sudhir at this moment. T.S., uh, it is going to be slightly important to know at this moment, uh, is this a High Court observation or an order? Well, this is a part of the order which has been delivered by the Madras High Court, but this is in, a, in the form of a suggestion to the union government to consider castration as an additional form of punishment for child sex abusers. He is also, the, the particular judge has also spoken to the, uh, the union government to introduce compulsory sex education for high school students. But he also realizes that the language that he has used is particularly strong, but he has also asked the activists who he knows will criticize his order to first exhibit sympathy and support for the victims of uh, child rape instead of talking of human rights only for the people who actually abuse children. So in that sense, a very landmark judgment and we'll have to see how the central government and various human rights organizations actually react to this kind of a suggestion coming from a senior judge of the Madras High Court. Absolutely. Uh, Sudhir, of course, there is no... I'm assuming that there is no precedence of this kind in the past. Uh, this is a very strong suggestion that uh, the court seems to have given and it, it mentions or, or gives out the reason also why it is making this suggestion. It says, suggestion of castration looks barbaric, but barbaric crimes should definitely attract barbaric model of punishment. In the past, Sudhir, based on your experience, if you can tell us, in the past, any of these suggestions that are made by the court, what exactly is the method that is followed by the government? Who is supposed to take the cue from here on? Well, uh, this essentially gets into the public domain in the form of a debate and uh, obviously the central government will be expected to react to this kind of a suggestion. But as I said, it is a suggestion made within an order of the Madras High Court. So it will really, the ball is really in the court of the union government as to how it reacts and how it chooses to react this kind of a suggestion. But given the fact that uh, abuse against children has been on the rise, there is a lot of civil society outrage against uh, people who abuse uh, children. Uh, we have seen several cases taking place, especially within schools, educational spaces in different cities of India, especially Bangalore. So obviously this is, a, this is an issue that kind of concerns and it states the mind of civil society. So the union government will be expected to re uh, reply. But yes, uh, human rights activists who I have spoken to have already come out in the open saying that this order and suggestion itself is very barbaric and therefore should not be applied in a country like okay. India. But uh, the judge himself pretty conscious of it, which is why he speaks about the human rights of the victims first than of the abusers. Okay, uh, Sudhir, do stay on with us. We've got Justice R.L. Anand also with us at this moment. He's a former judge joining us uh, here on India today. Thanks very much, Justice Anand. Can you uh, tell us yeah, a little about... I have, I, have, I, have, I have heard the views of the gentleman. I fully agree with it. The okay. suggestion made by the Honorable High Court of, um, of Madras mm -hmm. is, is uh, not in tune with the definition of the human right as defined in Section 2D, which talks of right to life, liberty, quality and dignity. I also endorse the view of the, uh, of the gentleman. That the that the crime against the child is definitely on the rise, and, but but the the question is whether the suggestion which has been given by the honourable high high court is acceptable to the society, whether it is in accordance with law, whether it is in accordance with the IPC or CRPC, and whether it by whether it or it does not violate the constitutional provisions. The central government, I don't think, is going to accept this suggestion because this is not a dictum; this is only an arbiter. Being an arbiter, the central government may look into matter and to my, as far as my knowledge goes, this suggestion was even earlier floated when the Ravaya case was uh, committed by, uh, was committed. And even that, at that point of time, it was a suggestion from many, many sections that such a punishment should be included in the CRBC or in the constitutional provisions. Mm -hmm. But it was not endorsed. And I, I, I am very, very confident that the central government will not endorse this provision. In spite of the fact, I do not endorse that the, that the, rape, should, the rape should be not be punished. Uh, in Gurmeet Singh case, uh, this Honorable Supreme Court, Gurmeet Singh, uh, 
the recent case, yes, the Honorable Supreme Court has already held it, that these are very, uh, rape cases are very sensitive cases, to be very frank, and this must be tried with well, all uh, expeditious and more sympathy, because the victim is in a lifetime trauma. Uh, therefore, such offenses should be taken very seriously. The question is whether the proposed punishment, which has been suggested by the, by the High Court, Mm -hmm. in whether it meets the ends of justice, or I, my reply would be that this suggestion is definitely barbaric and it may not be endorsed to or accepted by the central government or by the law agency and law minister. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, Justice Anand, for joining us on this story.